Has the government reversed the Gazette notification issued banning the import of chemical fertilizer to Sri Lanka? Has the government's stance on organic fertilizer changed? Sri Lanka announced to the world that we will be the first country to cultivate organically 100%. Is that still the case? Good evening. This is Primetime News on TV1. We've got details of these stories and more coming up on our news bulletin tonight. Before we take a look at those stories in detail, here are your top stories for tonight. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Government subsidies only for organic fertilizer. Permission granted to import agrochemicals for crops other than paddy. Was there corruption involved in the importation of nanonitrogen fertilizer? State Minister Shashendra Rajapaksa raises a privilege question in Parliament. Second reading of the 2022 budget passed in Parliament. 153 votes cast in favor. Prices of rice packets increased by 20 rupees. Plenty increased by 5 rupees. Day laborers in fort demand an increase in wages. Father Cyril Gamini provides a statement to the CID. 855 indictments filed against Pujit and Hemasuri to be taken up in court tomorrow. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Do your online shopping with Sambole.lk. Home delivery and pickup now available. Sambole.lk. In your top story tonight, President Gota Berajapaksa reiterated today that green agriculture continues to be the government's agriculture policy. However, he also instructed authorities to permit the private sector to import chemical fertilizer based on the necessity for cultivations including vegetables, maize and grains. These matters were discussed at length today during a meeting held at the President's office in light of the situation that has arisen in the country in terms of the shortage of chemical fertilizer and other related agrochemicals. The President also stressed during the meeting that neither chemical fertilizer nor any other agrochemical will be distributed under a government subsidy scheme. The Minister of Agriculture, Ministry officials, governors and other subject related officials have been called for today's meeting. As a government, our policy is to follow a green economy. That is the cornerstone and it will not change. However, we need to solve the issues which stem from it. First, we need to discuss matters pertaining to fertilizer. There are solid fertilizer, liquid fertilizer and nanonitrogen for paddy cultivation. The other matter is pesticides and weedicides. Are there any other requirements? There are two methods used to destroy weeds. One is applying weedicides during the first 8 to 10 days. The second is applying it after 20 days. In most areas, more than two weeks have lapsed. If we are to import, we should import weedicides applied after 20 days. The other type is not required since time has passed. Right. 
I made my statement. Now you must decide. You must decide the status of vegetables and maize cultivations. We must provide it for this season. However, these can only be given by a private sector. We cannot intervene. As a government, we will continue to promote green agriculture. <laughs> The president also expressed his dismay over failures to take steps to promote the government's agricultural policy. The ban was imposed earlier this year. However, the structure has not been formed yet. Those within the system are advocates of chemical fertilizer. If the secretary or the director general is against the policy, they must move away and allow someone else to do it. Everyone must follow this policy. Although scientists talk in favor of this, if we look at how they got their car, it's given by a fertilizer company. Some of them are on the director board of fertilizer companies. There are two sides, but I have mentioned in my manifesto itself that I will be moving towards a green agricultural policy. That was why I was voted in. I believe it is the right thing to do. The Minister of Agriculture expressed these views in Parliament pursuant to the discussion. None of us will bear different opinions. The Ministry along with the Minister, State Minister and Secretary are all well aligned with the President's policy on eco-friendly agriculture. The Government made a decision to move towards green agriculture. As the Minister of Agriculture, I will support that decision. You claimed both you and the Secretary are of the same stance. However, today the President has decided to allow the import of fertilizer. Can you speak about it? No decision was made at this morning's meeting to allow the importation of chemical fertilizer for paddy. The Director General of Agriculture was permitted to import specialized fertilizer required for vegetable farms which were affected severely due to the torrential rainfall experienced recently. Other than that, no steps were taken to allow the importation of other fertilizer. First, they claimed fertilizer would be sold at 350 rupees. Then, before the election, they said it would be given for free. Now all of that is forgotten. No subsidies will be given and even the Gazette banning the import of chemical fertilizer has been reversed. But they claim these are only plant nutrients. Since you mentioned it, I will make it clear. The Presidential Secretariat has not issued a directive to allow the importation of chemical fertilizer. Neither has a gazette been issued. Are you saying that the Gazette on Chemical Fertilizer has not been reversed? Can you responsibly state that chemical fertilizer will not be imported to the country? Honorable Minister, I told you, no chemical fertilizer will be imported for paddy. You weren't paying attention. I said permission was granted to import certain pesticides due to the rain. If chemical fertilizer is imported into the country under the guise of plant nutrients or any other name, I want you to tender your resignation. 25th of October 2019. Manifesto of Presidential Candidate of the Sri Lanka Pudjana Perimuna Gotabe Rajapaksa unveiled. According to the manifesto, vistas of prosperity and splendor, the agricultural sector of the country will be transformed into using 100% organic fertilizer within 10 years. 28th of April 2021, a proposal to completely ban the import of chemical fertilizer, pesticides and weedicides presented to the cabinet of ministers. The proposal was tabled by the president. The president proposed to the cabinet that cultivations for the 2021-2022 Maha season should be free from chemical fertilizer, pesticides and weedicides. Two committees were appointed to study the proposal. One of the committees was headed by the Vice-Chancellor of the Vimba University and the current Secretary to the Ministry of Agriculture, Senior Professor Udita K. Jayasinghe. The other committee was headed by the Secretary to the Ministry of Agriculture at the time, Rohana Pushpakumara. 29th of April 2021. 
President Gotabe Rajapaksa states that he will not take a step back and that Sri Lanka will be made the first country in the world to cultivate using 100% organic fertilizer. 9th May 2021, Gazette notification issued permitting the import of only selected agrochemicals. 11th of May 2021, a presidential task force headed by Basil Rajapaksa appointed to formulate a roadmap on transitioning from chemical fertilizer, pesticides and weedicides to organic fertilizer. Farmers across the island protest, demanding a solution to the fertilizer crisis. 3rd of August 2021, a statement from the Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, SR Artigalas, says there is no change on the ban imposed on the import of chemical fertilizer. He said that a stock of nanonitrogen fertilizer required for cultivations in Sri Lanka, approved by the Ministry of Finance, can be imported. 4th of August 2021, President's Media Division issues a statement saying no permission has been granted for the import of chemical fertilizer. The President's Media Division stressed that according to the proposal made by the Minister of Agriculture on the 31st of May 2021 to import plant nutrients manufactured using natural minerals, only the importation of specialized fertilizers through the Department of Agriculture and other relevant institutions were permitted under a special licensing procedure. Farmers across the island staged protests demanding for a solution to the fertilizer crisis. 5th of August 2021, cabinet decision reached to import 99,000 metric tons of organic fertilizer from the Chinese company Chindao Seawind Biotech. Cabinet approved 63.6 million US dollars for the import of this stock of organic fertilizer. 31st of August 2021, two samples of organic fertilizer from this company were sent to the National Plant Quarantine Service by the National Fertilizer Secretariat and tests conducted on these samples confirmed that one sample contained the bacteria Irvinia and Bacillus and the other sample contained the bacteria Bacillus. 22nd of September 2021, addressing the UN Food System Summit, President Gotabe Rajapaksa announced Sri Lanka's policy of banning chemical fertilizer, weedicides and pesticides and the promotion of organic fertilizer. Our more recent past, however, saw increasing use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides and weedicides that led to adverse health and environmental impacts. My government took the bold step to restrict imports of these harmful substances earlier this year. 13th of October 2021, 30,000 metric tons of potassium chloride fertilizer for the Maha season was imported. 2nd of November, speaking at the UN Climate Change Conference COP26 in Glasgow, President Gotabe Rajapaksa stressed the need for an agricultural revolution that will not threaten nature. Overuse of nitrogen, especially in fertilizers, has adverse impact on soil, water, air and human health. For decades, chronic kidney disease has been a serious issue in Sri Lanka's agricultural heartland. It is in this context that my government took firm steps to reduce imports of chemical fertilizer and strongly encourage organic agriculture. Nanonitrogen fertilizer airlifted to Sri Lanka from India to fulfill the need for fertilizer in the country. Allegations of massive corruption and fraud during the import of nanonitrogen fertilizer. Yesterday, Agriculture Secretary Professor Udhake Jai Singha says permission has been granted to import plant nutrients, including those that were banned, while noting that the transformation to green agriculture cannot occur overnight. The Ministry Secretary said that alternatives are being explored on an alternate substance as the cost of urea has increased. Today, President Gotabe Rajapaksa reiterated that a green agricultural economy is the government's policy. The president instructed officials to import agrochemicals through the private sector for vegetables, maize and other grain cultivation. 
The president further stressed that neither chemical fertilizer nor agrochemicals will be distributed among anyone under a government subsidized program. The price of vegetables has increased as well. The situation at hand has become worse as the supply of vegetables in New Aurelia was hampered as a result of yesterday's protest held in the area. According to our correspondent, the Manikumar Economic Centre in Katugastota received 1 million kilograms less than the amount they usually receive. The price of capsicum at the Economic Centre had exceeded 500 rupees and all vegetables were sold 350 rupees upwards. There is a shortage of leeks, carrots and cabbages. They were sold at excessive amounts such as 400 rupees. The main reason for that was there were not enough supplies for the demand. People didn't bring their produce because of the protest in New Aurelia. This matter can be resolved if solutions are found for the fertilizer crisis and the farmers are compensated. This was the situation at the Manning Market Complex in Paligoda. A very limited harvest from the upcountry was seen at the market today. A shortage of wholesale buyers was also observed at the market. The prices of vegetables have skyrocketed at present. There is a massive shortage of leeks, carrots, cabbage and kottamali leaves. There is a shortage of consumers as well. As a result of that, there is no one to purchase the vegetables that were sold at higher prices earlier. News First inquired about the selling prices of vegetables at the Peta market. We observed that prices of almost every essential item, including vegetables, have increased. Day laborers in Fort, commonly known as Natamis, have been left helpless in the face of the rapidly rising cost of living. These days, laborers took to the streets demanding for higher wages today. <laughs> We will not work until we are paid 15 rupees to load the goods. Everything is so expensive now. We have been getting the same wage since 1989. It is hard for us to feed our families. We are only asking for a wage of 15 rupees to load and 15 rupees to unload. The Restaurant Owners Association said that prices of rice packets as well as plain tea will be increased. We have decided to increase the price of fried rice by 20 rupees. Rice and curry with fish is priced at about 150 to 180 rupees in the market. We have decided to increase that price by 20 rupees as well. Therefore, rice and curry with fish will be priced at 200 rupees. Rice and curry with chicken is currently priced between 220 and 230 rupees. That will also be increased to 250 rupees. The Restaurant Owners Association will increase the price of a rice packet by 20 rupees and increase the price of plain tea to 30 rupees. We are not doing this to hurt the government or to exploit the consumers. Our industry will have to close down by Wednesday if this continues. That is not going to be a trade action influenced by the opposition. It will be a direct result of the current economic crisis in the country. Reverend Father Cyril Garmini appeared before the CID today to provide a statement. We'll bring you the details after this short commercial break. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Sarvodaya Development Finance Initial Public Offering Opening on 23rd November 2021 Invest in Humanity Welcome back to the news. The second reading of the 2022 Appropriation Bill was passed following a vote which was held in Parliament this evening. 
153 votes were cast in favor of the budget, while 60, 60 votes were cast against the budget. 11 members of parliament abstained from voting. Among them were Minister Gamini Lohuge, State Minister Vidura Vikramanayaka, Vijay Dasu Rajapaksa and Tiran Alas. TNA parliamentarians Shanakyan Rasamanikam, M. S. Mandiran, Kovindan Kavikaran and C. V. Vigneshwaram of the TMTK were also absent today. Mano Ganeshan and M. M. Taufik of the Samagijana Balavegya are among the members who were not present in the House today. Diana Gamage, Ishak Rahman, Nasir Ahmed, Faisal Kazim and H. M. M. Harris of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress who voted in favour of the 20th Amendment voted in favour of the 2022 budget as well. Mushraf Munjbin of the All Ceylon Makkal Congress, Aravind Kumar of the Tamil Progressive Alliance and AASM Rahim of the Muslim National Alliance voted in favour of the 2022 second reading of the budget. I spoke about tourism, exports, foreign employment and investments. We will take steps to simplify the rules that are obstructing the development of these sectors and promote these sectors in the future. We hope that the Honourable President will appoint a special task force to promote these sectors in the future. We hope that after the rains, an agricultural revolution will take place and priority will be given to make food items such as vegetables, fruits, eggs, chicken, fish and dried fish abundantly available in the market. I must state that we will not hold back in providing relief to all sectors including the tourism sector that were affected due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We clearly state that we have considered the entire country as one nation. We have allocated money for every 14,021 Gramaniladari divisions, all 4,917 divisional secretariats including the north and the east. We allocated money for all these areas in the same way. We gave only 3 million rupees to Madhumulana, which is my hometown. Just like we confiscated the money from the central bank bond scam, there were other proposals that were made here. And if they are legally proved, I will not hesitate to confiscate them as well. Mudal Raj Santa Karavagi, Tava Yojana, Tiano, and Ametri Sana Nuna, Eva, Nitian Gula Upuno, Mama Pasubata in Eva Pavaragan, Sialuma Deva. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa commenced the debate on the final day of the second reading of the budget. The opposition leader focused his attention on the economy of the country. Then other Nutana Mudal Nyaya, modern monetarism Kiela, other Itamakma secretless Mudal Lachuga. They call it the modern monetary theory and they print money as they wish. What is going to happen to Sri Lanka if we continue to print money like this? We are a country that does not have an international monetary unit. What should happen in a country like this is the generation of income rather than printing it. We need a quick solution to the unemployment issue. The only solution to this is to create a manufacturing revolution in the country. When there are new factories that come up, the problem will be resolved. The investment promotion needs to take place. In 2020, Bangladesh received 2.6 billion in FDIs. Cambodia received 3.6 billion. China received 1.4 billion. Sri Lanka only attracted 400 million. Why can't our rulers set up a one-stop shop at the presidential secretariat and make the process of attracting FDIs to the country more efficient? The balance of payment and the budget deficit requires immediate solution. At the start of the next year, there is a payment of $6.7 billion. If we take a look at the reserves and the foreign exchange, it is only sufficient for about a month and a half. We do not have to go before international financial organizations with a begging bowl. We can go talk to them and hold proper discussions. We have to reschedule our loans. We in the opposition are ready to support those activities. When the EU asked us about GSP, what did we tell them? We asked them to continue the GSP concession. There is no point in stagnating. Think of a stimulus to the economy. What strength has been provided to the tourism sector? They have not received anything. There are about 1 million direct and indirect employment opportunities there. We must encourage about 300 industries that are employment generating industries in the country. We are of the opinion that adequate attention has not been paid to these matters. Honorable Speaker, we are disappointed to note that the central nervous system of the government is not functioning. The head is unaware of what the body is doing. The body does not know what the legs are doing. The legs do not know what the hands are doing. How can a country flourish like this? Are they saying there will be one country, one law and trying to reenact the tragedy that befell the farmers of the country? We need a country that acts on the ten great virtues. 
तवत् विषय तवत् खेदों आचे के निर्माण एक रण मुकदमे एक रण दस राज्य धर्म में तो पदन अंगुल राज्य फालने आ अपेर रख रहा शे Here are some views expressed during the debate in Parliament today. We should have had foreign reserves of about 13 billion US dollars by 2019. The economic pundits who are trying to advise us did not have any global crisis to excuse their mismanagement of the economy when they were in power. The only pandemic at the time was the inability of their government. But if the previous government were able to maintain the economic growth forecast by the central bank in 2019, we would not have had to face such a situation. What did we forecast back then? We forecast an economy of 145 billion US dollars by the year 2019. The government of good governance gave us an economy of 81 billion US dollars. That was 64 billion US dollars behind the target. If we did not obtain large short-term loans in the past five years, we would not have faced a situation like this. At a time when our country is in shambles, they are not talking about how we can fix it. But they have made a plan to provide 3 million to local government members of the Pohotua every year so that they can steal some money from it. They have money to distribute among them. How can you provide employment to the youth? We saw young people who drew pictures on walls standing in line to get their passports during the last few days. During the two years of his presidency, he has created a country that people want to leave instead of a country that people want to live in. Also, chairing member, the Chemical Fertilizer Gazette has also been reversed. Now, Minister Mahindananda and Shashindra are both fighting with each other. We told Mahindananda Ludgamage that if you speak on behalf of them too much, they will strip you of your trousers and place it on your head. They did the same thing to Mervin Silva and Sajin Divas Gunavardana. Mervin Silva Toguna, Sajin Divas Gunavardana Tuna. Mama Kerna, Carbon Kapurum. I am not saying that organic fertilizer is the only solution, but we can produce organic fertilizer at every home. They will enable us to create jobs and open up new opportunities for people to earn. Although there is a small inconvenience initially, this should have been done methodically. This was not just done recently. Even during the time of Chandrika Bandarnaika Kumar Tunga, there was a massive program. <laughs> They destroyed the farmers who voted for them. They attacked the teachers who voted for them. You silenced all state sector employees. Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi were dictators, but they faced off against one of the most powerful countries in the world, the United States of America. But who is our sir facing off against? State sector employees, teachers and the very same people who voted for him. He is trying to show off his power. Only people who are not of a sound mind would say things like, I can kill them, I can drag them by the neck like dogs. The Colombo Permanent High Court Trial at Bar decided to hear the evidence on the 855 indictments filed against former IGP Pujit Jaisundara and former Defence Secretary Hemasiri Fernando over the Easter Sunday attacks. The case will be taken up before a bench comprising of Justices Namal Balale, Aditya Patabendige and Mohammed Izzadeen. Former IGP Poojit Sundara appeared before the Permanent High Court Trial at Bar this morning and former Defence Secretary Hemasiri Fernando appeared before the Permanent High Court Trial at Bar this evening. The duo have been indicted on 855 counts, including the failure to prevent a series of bombings by extremists even after having received information on the attacks. Appearing in court, the accused denied all charges against them. Although the counsel for the accused had filed preliminary objections at the Colombo permanent high court trial at bar court ordered for the hearing of evidence to begin tomorrow the former head of intelligence retired senior dig nilanta jawardana is due to give evidence in the case at 9 a.m tomorrow reverend father cyril garmini appeared before the cid again today to provide a statement the statement was recorded in relation to a statement made by Father Cyril Gamini recently. Moving on in more local news, Minister of State Specialist Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pillay, chairperson of the Women Parliamentarians Caucus, 
has sent a letter to the speaker today requesting him to take steps to prevent verbal harassment of female members of parliament. Now this was in reference to the recent statement made by the ruling party MP Tisa Kutti Arachi against opposition parliamentarian Rohini Vijay Ratna. MP Rohini Vijay Ratna raised a privilege question in parliament on the same statement today. Visi Venida, Kisidu Avastavaka Band and Ama Sandahan Karamin, Mila Sandahan Karamin. At no instance during my speech did I mention the price of any goods and ask the question, then Sapada. Secondly, this member twisted the names of those goods and made vulgar and uncivilized statements. He had made an extremely insulting statement about Mrs. Jalani Premadasa. Honorable Speaker, she does not have the ability to come to this house and respond to such statements. Honorable Speaker, it is clear that this statement was made as a cheap political trick. I wish to ask SLPP leader Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa if this statement reflects his party's view views on women. Honorable Speaker, I ask you if you approve this message. Honorable Leader of the House, as a senior minister in the government, do you approve this message? Although he is not here, I wish to ask the Chief Government Whip if he approves this message. The member in question was even given an extra five minutes. Minister Basil Rajapaksa is here today. I ask him to inform this House if the Rajapaksa family approves this message. Honorable Speaker, when Rohini Kaviratna and Jalani Premadasa were informed, the chair was requested to strike the comments from the record. What was the response of the member on the chair? He said he had not heard such comments. He empowered the offending member and even gave him more time. I say he's not suitable to sit as chair anymore. <laughs> A large group of members of the clergy were present opposite the CID today. They were demanding for justice for the victims of the April 21st attacks. Uh, the group of clergy, clergy gathered opposite the CID when Reverend Father Cyril Garmini appeared before the CID today for another round of questioning. Responding to summons from the CID, the spokesperson of the Catholic Church of Sri Lanka, Reverend Father Cyril Gamni Fernando, visited the CID for a third consecutive day to provide a statement. Father Fernando arrived at the CID at 10 a.m. today, by which time a large group of Catholic priests had gathered outside demanding justice for victims of the 2019 April 21st attacks. Father Cyril Gamni Fernando was summoned to the CID to provide a statement vis-à-vis -vis comments he had allegedly made during a Zoom conference on the April 21st attacks. The complaint was filed by Director of State Intelligence Service, Major General Suraj Saleh. Father Fernando was interrogated at the CID for about four hours today. Inviting international attention more and more, Sri Lanka has become a media attention for many people. Now they are wondering what's going on here. Now we must remember that the international the world they also have people who are very knowledgeable about these things. They are watching, they are observing and soon there will be a lot of comments coming on about the procedure and about how we are progressing with our investigations. The CID concluded questioning today. This is just a waste of time. What needs to be done is to uncover those behind these attacks and to reveal what actually transpired. Why are they trying to suppress this information? That is when the suspicion arises regarding whether these people were involved in the Easter attacks. If anyone thinks that we can be stopped by intimidation or undue pressure, then that is a joke. They cannot stop us. Intimidation and undue pressure will not work. We are calling on the government.
government to kindly do their duty and fulfill their responsibility to the people. <laughs> Raging floodwaters and landslides have become a staple in the lives of many Sri Lankans. Here is here's a story about a group of rescuers training a rural village in Mana on how to prepare. Alliance for Disaster Management or APED is doing in the village of Nanatan in the Mana district recently. Nanatan is a rural village situated along the banks of the historic Malvatoya River in the Mana district in Sri Lanka. Rain in the upper catchment areas of Anuradhapura causes the river to swell as it rushes down towards the ocean, flooding this northwest coastal town. The people of Nanatan, mostly farmers and fisher folk, have no choice but to live knowing the risk they face. Lives and property are lost each year, placing an unbearable burden on a community already struggling to make ends meet. It is to this village that the Asia Pacific Alliance for Disaster Management took a group of internationally trained Sri Lankan search and rescue instructors and conducted a resident training camp for volunteers for this community and also from the Mulethiv district. The training included basic survival swimming techniques, inflatable rescue boat drills, rope skills and community survival techniques. Internationally certified search and rescue instructors carried out the program that will run for a week. initiating this at the grassroots levels. What this brings is making the communities resilient through empowering them and also search and rescue basic water skills. CPR the program was conducted in close coordination with the Disaster Management Center and supported by World Vision. The second day's play of the first test between Sri Lanka and the West Indies concluded at the Goal International Stadium today. Batting in their first innings, West Indies were 113 runs for the loss of six wickets at the close of play today. Sri Lanka resuming from an overnight score of 267 for the loss of three FBA King News First Prodhuti Live Balanda Adama News First FB Page Jagada Gihing Like Karanda in the Tanakadi live news balan, then what then at the Danagan Air Obey ITI. Three wickets for 23 runs, while Praveen Jayavikrama took two wickets for 25 runs. 
Meanwhile, West Indies cricketer Kieran Powell expressed his views on what to expect during the day's play tomorrow during the At the Crease with Kieran Powell program telecast on TV1 at 7.30 p.m. today. I'll make a prediction right now. Let's see whose prediction is going to work. Now, Sri Lanka are going to bat second, and they're going to put up a set a big target for the West Indies, even despite they, despite even they dismiss West Indies for 113 runs. What are you, what's, what's your prediction? I don't think Sri Lanka will bat again if, if, if they can restrict West Indies below the follow-on. Um, I don't think that they need to bat again because the pitch is not getting any better. And you also want to take confidence into the second test match. You don't want to go into the second test match having batted again unnecessarily. A few batters not getting a score and then getting out cheaply again and going into the um, second test match with low confidence. So they would probably ride that high and try and get West Indies out second end. So what are, you gonna, what are your thoughts? Tomorrow, first day is first session tomorrow's day three will be crucial for the bowlers? First session is crucial for both teams. That first hour is the most important thing. The West Indies need to get through that first hour without losing a wicket. Sri Lanka need to at least break this partnership. You've only got wicketkeeper Joshua De Silva to come as another recognized batter and then you're into the two bowlers. So either way, it's gonna, it's, it's, it, it could be a very quick day um, because we've seen today 12 wickets fall and it, it only tends to accelerate as the test match goes on in terms of wickets per day. Now I'm the host of the show today. I'm going to give the reins to Kyron Powell as we are done for the day. And Kyron, why don't you do the wrap up of the show? Look at us tomorrow. Don't miss it. The best sports show, not only in Sri Lanka, all of Asia and taking over the world. How about some in singular? All right. We'll see you guys at the same time, uh, same place tomorrow with another entailing displays of play and analysis between the test match between Sri Lanka and West Indies. Until then, it's goodbye from all of us here. And that's a wrap of primetime news on TV1 for tonight. To follow the news of these stories and more, you can log on to our award-winning website, www.newsfirst.ok. I'm Shravan Benedict for the News First team, along with our sign language interpreter for tonight. Find it. Take care. God bless.